The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who of thy tender love towards mankind has sent thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, to take upon him our flesh and to suffer death upon the cross, that all mankind should follow the example of his great humility. Mercifully grant that we may both follow the example of his patience and also be made partakers of his resurrection. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Have this mind among yourselves, which is yours in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not count equality of God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, who had betrayed him, when he saw that he was condemned, repented himself and brought again the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priest and elder, saying, I have sinned in that I have betrayed innocent blood. And they said, What is thy to us, Siva? cast down the pieces of silver in the temple and departed and went and hanged himself. And the chief priest took the silver pieces and said, It is Counsel and bought with them the potter's field to bury strangers in. Wherefore that field was called the field of blood unto this day. Then was fulfilled that which was spoken by Jeremy the prophet, saying, And they took the thirty pieces of silver the price of him that was valued, whom they of the children of Israel did value, and gave them for the potter's field 
has the Lord appointed me. And Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, saying, Art thou the king of the Jews? And Jesus said, Unto him. Thou sayest. And when he was accused of the chief priests and elders, he answered nothing. Then saith Pilate unto him, Hearest thou not how many things they witness against thee? And he answered him to never a word, insomuch that the governor marveled greatly. Now at that feast, the governor was wont to release unto the prison people the prisoner whom they would. And they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. Therefore, where they had gathered together, Pilate said unto them, Whom will ye that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, which is called at Christ? For he knew that for in me they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have thou nothing to do with thy just man? For I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priest and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask for others and destroy Jesus. The governor answered and said unto them, Whether of the twain will ye that I release unto you? They say, said, Barabbas. Pilate saith unto them, what shall I do then with Jesus, which is called Christ? They all say unto him, Let him be crucified. And the governor said, Why, what evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, let him be crucified. When Pilate saw that he could prevail nothing, but that rather a tumult was made, he took water and washed his hands before the multitude, saying, I am innocent of the blood of this just person, See ye to it. Then answered all the people, saying, said, His blood be on us and, and on our children. Then release he Barabbas unto them, and when he had scourged Jesus, he delivered him to be crucified. Then the soldiers of the government took Jesus into the common hall and gathered unto him the whole band of soldiers, and they stripped him and put him a scarlet robe. And when they had plaited a crown of thorns, they put it upon his head, and a reed into his right hand. And they bowed the knee before him, 
and mocked him, saying, And they spit upon him, and took the reed, and smote him on the head. And after that they had mocked him, they took the robe off from him, and put his own raiment on him, and led him away to crucify him. And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compared to bear his cross. And when they were come unto the place called Golgotha, that is to say, a place of a skull. They gave him vinegar to drink, mingled with gall. And when he had tasted thereof, he would not drink. And they crucified him, and parted his garments, Casting lots, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet. They parted my garments among them, and upon my vesture did they cast lots. And sitting down, they watched him there, and sat up over his head, his accusation written, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then when were the two thieves crucified with him, one on the right hand and another on the left? And they that passed by reviled him, Wagging their heads and saying, Thou that destroyest the temple and buildest it in three days, save mocking him, and with the scribes and elders said, Let him now call. 
which were crucified with him, cast the same in his teeth. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that it that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Some of them that stood there, when they heard that said, This man calleth for Elias. And straightway one of them ran, and took a sponge, and filled it with vinegar, and put it on a reed, and gave him to drink. The rest said, Let me, 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 Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent, and the graves were opened. And many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection, and went into the holy city, and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion, and they that were with him, watching Jesus, saw the earthquake, and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly this was the Son of God. Out uh, for Children's Church, uh, they will be returning to us at the offering. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The summer after my sophomore year, I found myself in Rome with a bunch of other high school students and our adult chaperones. One of the stops on our tour was the Vatican, St. Peter's. And this 16-year-old West Texas Protestant boy was, shall we say, out of his depths. On our way out, our group came to Michelangelo's Pieta. I stood there in front of it, stunned. I was immobilized by awe, maybe for the first time in my life. The creamy marble seemed to glow from within. 
the sculpted folds of cloth, wrinkles in skin, strands of hair, every detail was so exact, it could have been not a carven statue, but a reality frozen in stone. Mary's gaze, contemplating the death of her son, took my breath away. The body of Christ, limp and lifeless in his mother's arms, brought me to tears. Why? Why have artists, since at least the second century, drawn and painted and sculpted over and over the passion of our Lord? Why have composers given us such passionate settings in music? Because this is, strange as it seems to the world, gospel, good news that God put on our human nature, became a particular man, Jesus, that Jesus chose freely to suffer, to die in obedience to the Father, that death and sin which seem invincible do not have the last word. Why do we tell the story, live the passion year after year for almost 2,000 years now? Because this is who we are, the church. Not just a social service agency, as important as Christian charity is, not just a fellowship of like-minded people, as helpful as community is. Not an NGO or advocacy group, as critically as social reform is needed today. The church is, before anything else, the body of the crucified Christ. And that identity... That reality is no less scandalous than the fact that her Lord, her Savior, Jesus, this man suffered at our hands, died on the cross, was buried in a grave. We are His whose humiliations reveal the power the mercy, the goodness of God. We are His new creation, born of water and the blood. We are united with Him in a death like His, as St. Paul says, but united not just with Him, united to each other in Him. One, one body. Very early in St. Mark's Gospel, he relates God's affirmation to Jesus at his baptism, You are my beloved Son. At the end, the centurion standing before the lifeless corpse of the crucified Jesus declares, Truly this man was the Son of God. And everything in between all the accounts of things this man did, this man's teachings, but especially the bedrock foundation, this man's passion, death, crucifixion. They are there to affirm that Jesus was more than simply this man. The Son of God. God incarnate. Jesus died for us. Like many of you, I grew up hearing about Jesus' passion, crucifixion, death, and resurrection. My 16-year-old self knew the story. Still standing before the Pieta, it became more real to me. A sculpture of an event that is not mentioned in Scripture connected me, a 16-year-old kid, with Jesus. The good news 
became a little clearer, a bit more true to me that day. Jesus, this man I'd known about, I'd known, was more alive to me than ever before. This is the truth St. Paul recalled to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, but emptied himself taking the form of a slave, being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself, becoming obedient unto death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of life, very God of very God, begotten of his being, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. The third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father and he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Ye who do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and make your humble confession to Almighty God, devoutly kneeling. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. The burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. 
Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith, If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous and he is the propitiation for our sins. Please stand. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Good morning and welcome to St. David's. We're glad that, that each of you are here this morning. Please be seated. Uh, we know that Palm Sunday is a, is a, a great big festive day, so uh, welcome to, to those who are visiting us as well today. Uh, if this is your first time with us, would you grab a Connect card out of the pew rack in front of you and just take a moment to fill that out. If you do that and drop in the offering plate, uh, we'll get you plugged into the things that are going on here at St. David's. Uh, let you know, we'll, you'll, you'll get our emails. We'll try not to spam you with a bunch of stuff. We do send out a, a regular email each week to let you know what's going on and we'd like to include you in that. Also send you on your way with a, a gift uh, after the service, our way of saying thank you for being here today. This is of course the beginning of, of, of Holy Week. Um, the busiest, most beautiful uh, week of the Christian year. Uh, it's when the church calls on us um, a little bit more than, than it usually does to be present um, in, 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 in awe and wonder uh, and, and in reflection of the great mystery of our salvation uh, wrought by our Lord Jesus Christ. And so we encourage you, thank you for being here today, and we encourage you as much as possible, be here with us throughout the week. Uh, you're not going to catch it all if you just come Thursday night. You're not going to get it all if you just come Friday. And goodness gracious, if we only see you next Sunday again, you're going to miss it all. Uh, so please, be with us throughout, throughout the week, especially as we go into the great triduum, the great three sacred days, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and no, not Easter Sunday, the Easter Vigil. Um, and so those are, those are the three great great, great uh, uh, celebrations, feasts of, of Easter here, um, the, the three sacred days, Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, and the vigil. We encourage you to be with us. We've got a bunch of other things throughout the week, um, morning prayer and mass at eight o'clock throughout the week, and, and even on Saturday we'll be saying morning prayer, and encourage you to be here as you're able. Um, but but those, those days, they are much like the passion narrative we heard, they're a sweeping drama. Uh, each day with its own nuances. And if you go to all three, you'll see all these themes of light and darkness, of, of things being stripped away and things being brought back uh, that, that reveal to us something of the mystery of our salvation uh, in the stories that we hear in the scriptures as well. Uh, so, if you didn't get it, we encourage you to be here throughout the week. When? Monday, Thursday, Good Friday, Easter Vigil. It'll be a, a wonderful week, and um, yeah, two things to note. One, this is the last day to uh, get your flower dedication in. If you want to make uh, a donation for Easter lilies for next Sunday, today's the last day to do that. Um, there's envelopes there. There's a QR code uh, if you, if you want to scan it and, and pay securely online. Um, the same thing with our, the Monday, Thursday Vigil Watch. Um, at the conclusion of the Monday Thursday service, um, the altar, everything is stripped bare, um, but, but mass is never said on Good Friday in commemoration of the fact that we behold the reality 
on Good Friday. And so the symbol fades away when the reality is present. And, and so, but we still receive communion. Communion is distributed, but not, but not celebrated. And so we, we consecrate a bunch of hosts on Monday, Thursday, and we reserve it in the chapel. And throughout uh, Thursday and, and into, into Friday morning, we, we gather in the chapel, just like the, the disciples gathered to, to pray around Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, we, we invite you to come for one hour, for one hour uh, at a very inconvenient time throughout the night or in the morning to come and pray in the chapel. We'll have aids that will, uh, booklets that will help you um, help you pray along, and um, the time goes by very quick. But we encourage you to do that. You can sign up uh, again the QR code on your phone, or the um, there's a sign up sheet, a hard copy on the connect table as well. All right. Thank you um, to our choir. Uh, thank you to uh, to Dr. Jeff, who is here from TWU, who uh, did a, a great job narrating for us as well. And thank you to to Gerald, our, our preacher. It takes a lot to put this, this next week on. Uh, and so if you have any questions, ask me next Monday. Right? <laughs> Anything comes up, any, just, just next Monday, next Monday. Um, no. Christ Jesus became obedient unto death, even death on a cross.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bound and duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who for our sins was lifted high upon the cross, that he might draw the whole world to himself, who by his suffering and death became the author of eternal salvation for all who put their trust in him. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, All glory be to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made thereby his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he brake it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it, in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we thy humble servants do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty. With these thy holy gifts which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. 
And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us. And of thy almighty goodness vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit, these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls, and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we, and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion, may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and also that we and all thy whole church may be made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. Remember also, O Lord, thy servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and are at rest in the sleep of peace. To these, O Lord, and to all who rest in Christ, we beseech thee to grant a place of refreshment, of light, and of peace. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, by whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O oh, Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Therefore let us keep a feast of old and of God that take us away the sins of the world and mercy upon us. Old and of God that take us away the We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting our own righteousness, 
in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed.
One final reminder, uh, we will have evening prayer tonight in the chapel uh, at 5 o'clock, and then from 4 till 4.45, I will sit in the chapel uh, to hear confessions uh, before Holy Week here. If there's anyone who wishes to make a confession, uh, we encourage you to, to do that here this afternoon from 4 to 4.45. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members and corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost, we all honor and glory, world without end. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.